Hi everyone, welcome to this new video lecture uh, about the immune system. So let's put this lecture in, in our current context. So we are facing a, a big pandemic right now. And um, we're gonna learn how actually, what are the main organs responsible for fighting uh, infections? Uh, the main cells that work, okay, during these um, these uh, types of infections. So, actually, during a viral infection or a bacterial infection, we have like many different types of cells that are, they are working simultaneously, okay, in order to fight uh, immediately this uh, this virus for example, or even in a long term. So we have different types of cells that offer this, these kinds of immunity. So let's start uh, introducing uh, the lymphoid organs that are classified as primary and secondary. Primary lymphoid organs are red bone marrow and the thymus. Okay, here the red bone marrow and here you have the thymus. The red bone marrow is a highly vascular tissue found in the spaces between trabecular of spongy bone. So this is a real picture of um, red bone marrow. You see here the trabecular of the bone, okay? And here in the middle, we also have the yellow bone marrow. But the yellow bone marrow is more related to the storage of fat, okay? Because fat here could eventually help uh, to as an energy source in case uh, it was needed. So the red bone marrow is mostly found in the ends of long bones, although it could also be found in flat bones. And the main function is hematopoiesis. What is hematopoiesis? This is the production of uh, new um, blood components. Okay, so we have here the, in the red bone marrow, the hematopoietic stem cells, they are mesenchymal cells that will differentiate into red blood cells, white blood cells, and also platelets. Uh, reminding you that platelets, they are actually considered uh, cellular fragments, okay? But we will give more focus on white blood cells. Why white blood cells? Because white blood cells, they are considered the cornerstone of the immune system. The white blood cells are classified into granulocytes, agranulocytes, and lymphocytes. Uh, so some of them, they are considered uh, phagocytes because they do phagocytosis, okay? They engulf um, pathogens. Uh, and others, they are uh, more related to the regulation of uh, immune cells activities. So the first group of granulocytes, we have basophils, neutrophils, and eosinophils. Neutrophils are the most predominant ones, okay? Uh, basophils and the eosinophils, they are more related with the allergic response in case of asthma, or in case of uh, parasitic infections. On the other hand, uh, the agranulocytes group, we have the monocytes, which are uh, considered undifferentiated uh, cells because they are produced in the, bowl, in the red bone marrow, and then they go to the blood circulation, okay, monocytes, but in the blood circulation, they have a, a short lifespan. They live uh, only up at about um, eight hours. But when these monocytes, they reach uh, a, a target tissue, okay, this tissue could be, for example, the lungs. Uh, in the lungs, uh, they are differentiated into macrophages. So in case of lungs, we have lung macrophages but actually we can have macrophages like in many different organs. 
uh, and they are also classified as phagocytic, uh, phagos phagocytic cells because they engulf um, different uh, pathogens. And lymphocytes, we have uh, three uh, main subtypes. We have T cells, B cells. T cells, they are the most predominant ones, like 8, 80 or 285% of total lymphocytes, they are T cells. T cells because they go, um, they are produced in the red bone marrow and then they um, migrate to the thymus where they will uh, be matured. Then we have B cells. B cells, they are um, produced in the red bone marrow and they are also matured in the red bone marrow. And A NK cells, they are called natural killers. Okay, natural killers, they are more uh, related with the um, uh, surveillance of the immune system. So they are those type of cells that act as the police. So they are controlling and surveilling um, the activity of the other cells. Okay, they are more related to the innate um, immune uh, system uh, because they act like in a short term. So they, they actually, they kill the pathogen uh, immediately when our body is um, exposed to this uh, pathogen. Whereas T cells and B cells, they are more related with long last immunity. So T cells, uh, more specifically, they are uh, considered uh, cell uh, mediated uh, immunity, okay, uh, because they regulate, like, they regulate and coordinate different cell uh, immune cell functions. Uh, there are many subtypes of T cells, including T helper, T suppressor, T cytotoxic, which are the most predominant ones. Um, and B cells, they are considered um, the an antibody uh, related to the antibody immune response because those cells, they can um, generate, produce uh, antibodies when the, our cells, they are exposed to, uh, for the first time to a pathogen, they are then introduced to other cells that they will uh, then generate and mediate the production of antibodies for uh, long lasting um, immunity. We have the, this other primary uh, lymphoid organ, which is the thymus. The thymus uh, is uh, located in the mediastinum, okay? So in the center of the thoracic cavity, uh, is situa it situates right posteriorly to the sternum and medially to the lungs and superior to the heart, okay? So superior, here is the heart, superior to the heart, okay? Posteriorly to the sternum. Um, and the thymus is, has two lobes, okay, left lobe and right lobe. And the, fun the main function of the thymus is the maturation of lymphocytes, okay. Uh, the thymus has basically some differences uh, regarding the adult and the kid, okay. So in the kid, the thymus, uh, in the kid of a one or two years old, the thymus has the greatest size, like comparing the thymus in proportion to the size of the kid. Okay, so this is the greatest size. Um, whereas in the adult, the, the thymus uh, shrinks, so it reduces the size uh, after the, the puberty. 
anatomically we have here the thymus okay uh, this is an organ which has a, an external capsule uh, this capsule is made of fibrous connective tissue and we have the capsule here uh, inside the capsule we have like different uh, lobules so we have right and left lobes okay and inside of each lobe we have different lobules which are those uh, little segments here okay so the lobules okay which are the little segments they are actually like uh, divided by the capsule itself so the capsule uh, if you take a look at this other picture here which uh, this is the histology okay of the thymus so this is the capsule it has like an outer capsule and an inner capsule made of fibrous connective tissue this um this inner uh, capsule projects uh, deep into the tissue okay and this forms the lobules so this is like a lobule this is another part of another lobule part of another lobule so we have those little uh, uh, segments inside the, the tissue we also have uh, uh, a region that's called cortex this region is like a dark has a dark color in the histology and is predominantly made of uh, cortical epithelial cells and thymocytes okay we have the medulla which which presents a light color in the histology and the the cells that compose the medulla are uh, the medullary epithelial cells we have macrophages and dendritic cells also okay and we have the um, what about the lymphocytes because we also are expected to see lymphocytes in the thymus so the lymphocytes they are uh, mainly present here in this region called trabecula okay which is the space uh, between those two uh, layers of, of uh, capsule. So, so that the, the lymphocytes, they can easily migrate to the blood vessels, okay? And then reach the systemic circulation. So this is, uh, this is uh, an overview about the primary lymphoid organs, okay, the red bone marrow and the thymus, basically.